Do not worry, your eyes do not deceive you. We have indeed created a $100 video editing computer that can do 6K raw video. And we're gonna show you exactly how. Welcome back to No Plan. I have recently had to buy a $2,000 set of parts to build one of my video editors a whole new video editing machine. And it got me wondering, is it possible to do it for a little bit cheaper? Well, the answer is, yeah, for the sake of meme purposes, yeah, absolutely. But what we have here is a Dell Optiplex 7020. This is a kind of device that you would see probably at most doctor's offices or mechanic shops or something like that roughly probably about 15 years ago. So this is not exactly any kind of a beefy machine. So what have we done to make this be able to edit 6K raw video? Well, a few strategic hardware choices and software choices. So let's dig in. The computer itself I actually received about three years ago and it basically just would not boot. The person was like, eh, it doesn't work, here you go. And to be clear, we are including the price of the computer in the $100, by the way. So, I got this machine, replaced the SSD, and it started working. I was able to install an OS on there, so classic situation where a hard drive failed and you just replace it and the machine boots. It was great, I got a new machine for it. But when you look at these on eBay, you're seeing them for around $30 to $35. Some of them do go higher into the $50 range or something like that. This one does have a Core i7 4790, which means that it has eight cores, four of which are physical. So it's not too bad, especially for the time. But it is an integrated GPU, which means it is going to chug in the world of anything GPU related. And that is where the software choices come in. We have decided to go with Kubuntu as our operating system. As you know, I will definitely always default to Linux. And we are using DaVinci Resolve as our video editor. Now, any of you who knows DaVinci Resolve knows that it needs a great GPU. And so we chose to go with the NVIDIA camp. And our budget was a little bit limited to keep this under $100. So within the $30 price range, because we had to put $30 into an SSD, $30 into the machine, and $30 into the GPU, we went with the NVIDIA Quadro P620, which if you know anything about this graphics card, which you probably don't, it is basically one of those business class GPUs that has just two gigs of VRAM, four display ports on the back, and it's basically meant to be able to take a machine like this and plug it up to a multi-monitor setup. So it's not exactly the most powerful. So we were not expecting a whole lot from it. And especially when I ordered it off of eBay, it took a long time to come in and I was really hoping I didn't just lose the money. Then we'd be up to 130 bucks. But no, it did indeed come in. We plugged into this machine. We had the OS installed. We configured DaVinci Resolve to run on Kubuntu and we were shocked. So let's have a little bit of fun playing with it. That's what she said. That's what she said. Do you love No Plan, but you just can't get enough? Well, make sure you check out No Plan Live. It's a new podcast from us. We're doing a new episode every single month. You are hosts, Jack and I, have a great time talking about a wide range of subjects from technology to cars to everything you can think of. Make sure you leave what you would want to see on No Plan Live in the comments below. It will be sure to cover it on the show. And that's why we do the show live, actually live. You can watch and comment and interact with us in real time. That's sure you check out No Plan Live every single month right here on the No Plan YouTube channel. What you're seeing here on the screen right now is actually 6K raw footage out of a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. And this is a 4K 30 FPS timeline. Now, what's interesting about this, if we go into our preferences, you'll see here we have our GPU and our video memory is only two gigabytes. And our RAM itself is also only 16 gigabytes. Not too bad, but only 16. And it is shocking how smooth this can actually play. And if we start scrubbing on the timeline, it's going to places not too bad. Little chug every once in a while, but you can see here on our counter, we are indeed sticking around the 30 FPS time frame. Now, one little configuration that we did have to do to make sure that this does play back smoothly is underneath playback, we can go to timeline playback resolution and we're using quarter. We're not doing full timeline playback resolution, but that is totally fine because here we are being able to do 6K raw, B-raw footage on this machine. 
And like I will show you here, we're running the NVIDIA driver. Uh, it's actually only 550. I believe that's the last one that they actually supported on this card. So to me, that was absolutely shocking. As somebody who works with DaVinci Resolve all the time, I know how nice it is to have at least something like a 3080 these days. But for this little P620 to actually keep up with 6K raw footage, it's very, very impressive. So I wanted to try maybe a couple other things here. So I have actually some GoPro footage, which if we go into the file specs here, you'll see is H265. There's a 5.3K that the GoPro Hero 12 will actually record. Um, we can go ahead and select an in point, select an out point. And this is where it does start to become back to reality just a little bit. We're running about 9.5 frames per second here. But let's go ahead and throw this on our timeline. We'll do just video here. And it actually starts playing back a little bit better at the 14.3. This is probably because we're going down to quarter resolution when it comes to playback on the timeline. So clearly H.265 is sadly not that great for this. And as I said, this is the Quadro P620, and this was actually a GPU released in 2018, so about seven years ago. The thing that's interesting about that to me is around that time was still in the H.265 adoption phase. For instance, one of the cameras that I absolutely fell in love with when it came out was the Samsung NX1. But what was funny about that camera is it was like the first camera to really come out with native H.265 recording and everybody complained that it played like garbage. So let's try here to see if we can play some H.264 footage any better. And we do. This, it's not 5.3K, but this is from a Panasonic S52X, uh, and it's actually playing back uh, at a you know cinema 4K resolution, no problem at all. So the H265 is still kind of the problem child here. H264 is playing fine in 4K. That's not too unexpected. H.265 is still terrible on a lot of machines. H.265 is garbage. So, with us being able to do H.264 and B-RAW on a 4K timeline, that means that you could actually use this for some legitimate editing purposes at $100. And that's pretty impressive. But let's stress test it a little bit. So, let's do some things here. We're gonna come over and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of that H.265 clip. We understand that that is not gonna work well in here. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna just cut up this clip a little bit. We're gonna move it around. We'll get rid of that space there. And let's add ourselves a cross dissolve. So about a 14 fr frame cross uh, dissolve and there we go. It's kind of just skipped over it, but we play it back. We get that, that dissolve, no problem. So cross dissolving, not too bad. And let's go over here, we'll get rid of that cross dissolve and we'll add in ourselves another, let's do a, a diamond transition. Get a little Star Wars-y on this. And there we go. So some other transitions not doing too bad. Now let's go ahead and try some titles. Titles are uh, one of those things that you know, you start adding them to a timeline, uh, they can definitely be a little bit more than a dissolve. So we'll uh, title this for what it is. We'll say it's Jack at the Daytona Motor Speedway. We'll add a drop shadow here. And let's try playing this back. Okay, a little bit more of a chug than we had without the text. I'm seeing some skipped frames there just a bit but it's not too, too bad. So clearly when we start adding some things, we are going to see a little bit of a decline in speed and performance. Now, this is only about a 16, almost 17 second clip here. But the thing is, is you can also do things like caching to your disc and things like that to improve it even better. And also, if this was my main editing machine, I probably would be sticking with 1080p, but that would give us even more possibility of better performance. So let's go ahead and see what we can do to actually render this. We'll go ahead and add our cross dissolve here again. We'll make it 30 frames and we'll go ahead and go to our rendering. Now, 
Unfortunately, this GPU does not seem to include the ability to do H.264 rendering on this machine with Kubuntu. On Linux systems, if you want to render with H.264, it does have to be supported by your GPU within the drivers, and that does not seem to be the case here. So, we can choose uh, another available intermediary codec here. We do have MPEG, we got a few other options we can choose from. But I'm probably just gonna go ahead and choose DNxHR, and we're gonna choose one of the lower quality settings. Well, let's go ahead and choose standard quality. And we're gonna do timeline resolution, no alpha channel. Our audio is gonna be linear, linear PCM. And then we'll choose our render destination, and we'll give it a title. All right, and then we will hit render, and let's see what we can make happen here. This is the big moment of truth because if you can edit okay, but it can't render, then you're kind of out of luck. But let's see what DNxHR can do on this $100 machine. A few moments later. All right, so that has completed in one minute and 11 seconds. Let me keep this very clear. This is a $100 machine with a two gig VRAM seven year old GPU. And it's rendering 6K raw video and H.264 4K video on a 4K 30 FPS timeline for a hundred bucks. Your machine should no longer be an excuse. So let's play that back and see how it did. And there we go. That is a 4K video. Oh, and it's Daytona International Speedway. So let's shut this down and show you what we're looking at on the inside. Now that we've got this all shut down, one of the things that I want to point out too, we're actually running this monitor off of the internal GPU. We've got it plugged in directly into the display port that was already there for the machine. And that's actually pretty important to know because then the weight of this monitor is not being put on this GPU and the GPU can be left purely for processing. So now let's open her up. Like we said, this is a used SSD. You can get these for about $30 on eBay. And then we have our P620 right there. And as you can see here, we actually have four sticks of RAM and they don't all seem to match, but this machine actually is DDR3. Now, of course, one of the things that's interesting about this machine is that it is just such a general purpose, business class type computer, and we've been able to make it do this. So the P620 is probably one of our better options, definitely within the price range. But if you wanna do this yourself, one thing to keep in mind, you're not gonna be able to do anything that has any sort of power input to the GPU unless you do some sort of janky extra PSU run a cable inside and plug it in kind of thing. You're gonna have to pretty much go with something that can be powered off of the PCIe port. And in this case, we do. We were able to find some other GPUs actually that were a little bit over our price range, more in the 50 to $60 point, and they did actually have double the VRAM up to four gigs, and that would help this machine even more. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It is just a fun little exercise to be able to do things like this, make computers do things you didn't think they could really do. If you wanna see us do something else with this computer, let us know in the comments below. Would you like to see us do some gaming tests on it? Or maybe we could even turn it into some sort of a live streaming machine. This would actually be pretty killer as an OBS box. So just let us know what you would like to see. And that pretty much wraps up for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Let's see what DNxHR can do on this $100 machine.